For this episode, we want to take a trip back to the beginning of the film industry in Baton Rouge, back to 1917. Unlike today, in 1917, Baton Rouge was still a very small town. The 1910 census has the Baton Rouge population at 14,800. That's less than half the size of an average enrollment for the local LSU campus. To compare, the 1910 census for New Orleans was 350,000. Another thing to consider, all the early silent films up into the teens were called shorts, as they were usually one or two reels, with each reel about 10 to 12 minutes. A feature film was considered at least five reels or over an hour in length. While New Orleans had produced about 50 films by this time, only a couple of them were feature films. But Baton Rouge's first film was to be a feature film. Keep this in mind as we flash back to 1917 with the feature film, Burning the Candle. Although several national film companies had come to New Orleans to shoot their photo plays, the first major movie studio to film on location in Baton Rouge was the SNA Film Manufacturing Company. SNA was founded in 1907 by George Spohr and Gilbert Anderson, creating the name S&A. It was based in Chicago, Illinois, and Niles Canyon, California, and their stars included box office favorites such as Francis X. Bushman, Gloria Swanson, and of course studio co-owner, actor, and director Gilbert Bronco Billy Anderson, who was billed as the first Western movie star. SNA had become a major studio mainly because of the 150 Bronco Billy Western shorts, which were extremely popular at the time, and their series of Charlie Chaplin comedies. In 1917, SNA sent a cast and crew to Baton Rouge to secure exterior scenes for their drama Burning the Candle. According to trade reports, this was the first recorded time that the Baton Rouge area was chosen for any type of film work. The acting roster for this film included Henry G. Walthall, Mary Charlson, Patrick Calhoun, Thurlow Brewer, Frankie Raymond, and Julian Barton. Harry Beaumont directed the film. Walthall was at that time considered the greatest character actor on the screen. With the career spanning almost 30 years and 325 film credits, Walthall is remembered and seen here in D.W. Griffith's The Birth of a Nation. Burning the Candle was his 215th film. Starring alongside Walthall was Irish actress Mary Charlson. Walthall and Charlson had starred in eight films together between 1916 and 1919. They married in 1918 and remained together until his death in 1936. Burning the Candle presented no moral message, and the only villain in the film was alcohol, even though it was three years before the era of Prohibition. In the film, Walthall portrays James Maxwell, a young man who has a weakness for alcohol. After marrying his southern sweetheart, Molly Carrington, played by Charlson, he takes her to live in New York where he becomes a cotton broker. In New York, he frequently has occasion to drink and within a year has become an alcoholic. He ultimately loses his job, his wife, and his self-respect. His wife returns home to her family in the South and soon demands a divorce. Not willing to lose his love, the young man struggles to defeat his addiction, regain his job, and win back the love of his wife. Exterior scenes for burning the candle included the cottage, a plantation built in 1824 and located on the Mississippi River Road south of Baton Rouge. It served as the southern home of Molly. This was considered one of the first times a Louisiana plantation was included to give authenticity to a film. Other scenes were shot in and around Baton Rouge. Referring to Baton Rouge, director Beaumont reported that the little city furnishes excellent material for typical southern exteriors. According to reports, the town of Baton Rouge, its mayor, police chief, and leading citizens turned out en masse to welcome Walthall and the rest of the cast and crew. In addition, Charlson was presented a coal black baby lamb by a group of her fans. Burning the Candle was released in the U.S. on March the 5th, 1917, and was proclaimed to be one of the best feature productions ever put out by SNA. Unfortunately, as with many films during the silent era, Burning the Candle is considered a lost film. A 
Another lost treasure is The Cottage, which can also be seen in two other films, Cinerama Holiday in 1955 and Band of Angels in 1957. Tragically, the plantation was hit by lightning and destroyed by fire in 1960. All that remains are some pillars. Through the years, locals and visitors have reported seeing apparitions and hearing noises. Some believe it's the spirit of Angus Holt, who was the tutor hired by the plantation owners and who had lived there most of his adult life. Others believe they are the souls of the 70 passengers and crew of the steamboat Riverboat Princess, headed to Mardi Gras, who perished in an explosion on February the 27th, 1859, near the cottage. Whatever the reason, the cottage ruins remain a popular attraction for locals and on many haunted tours. This has been a presentation of Hollywood on the Bayou, preserving Louisiana's rich film history with books, prints, presentations, and exhibits. If you have questions, comments, or to learn more, you can visit our Facebook page or sign up for our Louisiana and Film newsletter, which is on our website, hollywoodonthebayou.com. We hope you enjoy this episode of Louisiana Film History Flashback. Sue and I thank you, and we'll see you next time.